All right, everyone, I love it when left-wingers bring up the topic of bigotry towards migrants and refugees and stuff like that. And it's really funny because the most bigoted thing I would think you can do is to go into someone's country, bomb it, effectively invade it, uh, drone strikes, whatever, destabilize it, funding militias in some cases like we did with the FSA. And then you, you turn around and you tell your own population, hey, by the way, we've got some new neighbors moving in. I'm sure that they'll be very happy with the United States and there will be no problems. Yeah, we destroyed their home country, forcing them to flee despite the fact that they had kind of a nice thing going in many cases, but we're going to take in more of them. Like Beijing Biden is swearing up and down he's going to increase the input of refugees to the U.S. to the six-figure range. It's very low under Donald Trump and it's quite stringent that it's going to be like, what was it, a quarter million or 500,000 or something every single year. Literally unsustainable numbers, by the way. It's not necessary for the economy. Um, it's not necessary for diversity, which is, is a farce. Uh, what I would say is this. If you want to help refugees, like let's say you're a leftist. The best way to help refugees is to be anti-war, anti-world policing, and say to the government, why don't you just not invade them to begin with? Now, I don't have a problem with the U.S. government in coordination with foreign nations with which we have alliances, but they need help to, to because they get like military groups and guerrilla warfare and terrorists and stuff. I personally don't consider that war in the general sense. You're aiding an ally that is explicitly asking for your presence there. There are exceptions, of course. Our involvement in Yemen comes to mind. By the way, one of the few things that Beijing Biden has done that actually makes any sense. We can kind of sort of give him credit. Although, really, uh, the situation's all fucked up anyway. Well, the Houthis are conducting terrorist activities. So, you know, it, it's sort of a there is no good guy in the situation situation. I suppose that the Saudis are, are more of a standard state and the Houthi rebels are, are more of an uprising. Uh, but I, I think at this point, it's safe to say that everyone's hands there have quite a bit of blood on them, including the Trump admin, by the way, and I was critical of them for it. That being said, it, just don't create refugees. If you're not creating refugees, at least through war and stuff like that, it's one thing a country that has like a banana republic has a massive drought, all the bananas die, and there's 100,000 people that don't have enough food, and their, their government can't save them. The best thing ultimately, though, that Uncle Sam can do in those situations is move in and try to prop up infrastructure. Because the other failed thing that we do, the first failed thing we do is we bomb a country or, or a country destabilizes and we, we take people out of that country sometimes for long periods of time or even permanently. You can give them brain drain, you can cause economic problems because now the population is demonstrably lower, the economy shrinks, you've got overexpanded infrastructure for, for the total number of people in, in certain regions, it creates a cycle of poverty. That's one thing. The other thing is we give away a lot of, and this is especially the case for East Africa, free food shipments. We say, well, we, we're not going to take the refugees in, we'll have refugee centers in that country, but we're going to give people free food. The unfortunate problem is that the farmers in those countries, and they tend to be agrarian, can't compete with free. What you end up is a cycle of dependency. This has been openly discussed within academics quite a bit. Um, the best thing that you can do is attempt to strengthen the local government and build infrastructure. To invest. Ultimately, get these countries weaned off of the teat of socialism and handouts and, and create an atmosphere in which investment will occur in countries that have Sometimes they're rural and they have a vast amount of farmland. Well, it's not being, you know, farmed in a, in a modern sense. Output is therefore low. The country is in poverty. They have industries that aren't being, you know, actually utilized. They have a mine full of diamonds and the only, the only thing going on is slavery, basically. Uh, <laughs> terrible working conditions and people with pickaxes. Not even any mechanization, necessarily. You've got all of these things going on, and those countries do need help. But the answer, especially if the refugees are the result of struggle that you yourself have participated in, the answer is not to bring in refugees. Because I'm, I'm putting myself in their shoes, and this is something leftists should more often do because they scream about the poor, and yet they never fathom what it's actually like, because most of them are trust funders, for example. Uh, they screech about how bad uh, a group of people is, but you know they've never even tried to talk to them and stuff like that. I see that ignorance all the time. What you should do is just not make refugees. Put yourself in their shoes. Uh, your, your village has been bombed. Uh, your wells have been poisoned. And drones have rained down rockets, red glare upon your country. And taken out your government. And there's terrorists and shit like that. Then the same country 
that bombed you in the first place, and you're well aware of it. You know that they fly through the sky with impunity, total air control, you can't even fight them. They're, they've bombed your house, you've lost a relative, you've lost friends, and now they're saying, oh, come to our country and we'll, you know, take care of you. We'll give you welfare and we'll, we'll put you in, you know, a random community in the United States because that's the other thing that they're doing is Beijing Biden, of course, has decided to randomly resettle illegal immigrants and, and migrants and refugee asylum seekers in communities without those communities' consent uh, or, or, or even necessarily informing them prior. Uh, which is a terrible idea because some communities are more capable than others of actually sustaining the additional population, which will, at least at first, need welfare. There aren't going to be enough jobs. These people, you know, many of them are penniless. They're not going to open up a pizza shop, so to speak. Uh, I love it when people compare them to people who came overseas, like, during the Homestead Act. And I'm like, You're, the United States partnered with, with rail especially would give you f virtually free farmland. A peasant from Sweden could come and get their 50 acres and, you know, pay little to nothing. It was an agreement that was struck at the time when we had a vast amount of arable but empty land. We don't have that anymore. Virtually all usable land in the United States is taken up for some purpose or another. It's set aside as military or national park. It's been developed. It's privately or publicly owned. Something is there. Well, it doesn't make sense. All you're doing is increasing the concentration of people on land already being effectively used. It would make much more sense to develop these other nations. Ah, there's the thing. The developed world doesn't want competition from the third world. Ultimately, economically, it's cheaper to keep them poor and then to take in a few refugees once in a while and some migrants. That's about all. Peace out.